Justin in St. Louis, Missouri. See more better with free prescription lenses.com. And now I'm going to cut some Crizal Sapphire lenses for your gently used. He got these off the internet, mailed them to me. It is the gently used Oakley 5079 carbon plate. It comes with a little, of course, the Oakley carrying cloth bag that he mailed to me. And this is. Again, the frame that he mailed to me, I'm an authorized Oakley dealer. I can get you this frame, but he mailed me this one. It is the Oakley 5079 carbon plate in color 01, the matte black. It's got the carbon plate written on there. And if anyone else wants this frame, you can save $50 on the price of your lenses by getting the frame from me. But I'm going to go ahead and get started. Normally, I would pop out the original demo lenses. They do not come with this frame. Although, i got to tell you, Justin, this frame looks brand new. And they say gently used. Boy, was it ever. So, I've never seen a used frame in such good condition. I'm going to program the shape into the computer. It is number 1332. Let's do that. I'm going to hit the start button. Let me move this out of the way. But a little stylus is going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Now, this shape has been programmed into the computer, so years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, I can send them right to your home, and you'll see how to install them yourself as I demonstrate to you tonight. Now, your pupillary distance is 31 in each eye of the computer. If the, Once the shape finally pops up, come on, pop, pop, pop for me. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to tap the minus button until we get down to 31 millimeters. I want to raise the optical center height up to 18. In fact, let me mark that. We're going to go 2.5 above and cut at 18. Now, let's get your lenses prepped. Your right eye is minus 2 and a quarter, minus 2 at 111, minus 2 and a quarter, minus 2 at 111. Let me make sure everything's on zero. We're good to go. Put it on minus two and a quarter. Take the lens out of the protective packet. It comes with a little laminate on the front of the lens to protect the lens so nothing rubs against the front surface during shipping. Rotate the lens until the spherical component comes into view, which is the, yeah, the spherical power. Check your astigmatism correction, the second curve, and I'll explain what all that does a little bit later. And I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. Which, of course, I need more ink. More ink, the never-ending story of my life. There is a pestilence upon the land. There is never enough ink. Never. So, now I can put three dots on there. Let's make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. And it is. Finally, three dots, and this is the right lens. Put that up there. Let's do the same thing for that. Of course, let me mark this one as the right lens. Minus two and a quarter, minus two at 111. Minus two and a quarter, minus two. And these are the Crizal Sapphire 360 lenses, and that is your right lens. You're going to get the original packet, so you know you're getting the authentic lenses. And your left lens, minus 275, minus 150 at 45. Just checking that was on 111. Let's turn that to 45. Put the power drum on minus 275. Take the lens out of the protective packet. Take the laminate off the front of the lens. Put the lens in. Actually, I don't even have to rotate this one. I almost got it right. Let's move that. Get the everything lined up like just like the crosshairs of a scope. I'm measuring vertically and horizontally. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Let's put three dots on your lenses. And this one is L for left. Let me mark, as I mentioned, this is the left lens. Minus 275, minus 150. I make sure to write this on here so when you get the original thing, you've got that. Now, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> you know you weren't getting away without a bad joke in here. 
Okay, so, oh, I've already got them on over here. I got two right here. Let me throw those back in. This is a block, or as I like to call it, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got that there. I've got my phone right here because Larry, in, also in Missouri, said he would call me about a Ray-Ban. So I've got my phone close. Put that on the platform there. Put that one on there. Peel the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back is a silver button that is a magnet that's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. Place that there. And the reason why I put those three dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. That blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that in inset. So I'm going to get those lined up just perfectly. Like I said, I've measured vertically and horizontally. I just want to make sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame, and it is. You like my index finger and my thumb. So get everything lined up exactly where it's supposed to be. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right, which will be played by the left lens. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Same pupillary distance for your left eye, 31. So that has mirrored the right. Get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. And... Hit that button, the arm's going to come down place the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut your own lenses at home. You won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. I'm going to wake up the computer. These are polycarbonate lenses. They are plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex. I would select that. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens, only on the rear concave surface of the lens. The actual cutting wheel is this heavy grit wheel. It's going to act like sandpaper. It is a diamond-crusted wheel that's going to grind away the lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center, or that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now, the magnet's going to do its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck, or as I like to call it, say it with me, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Oh, I know you guys are sick of that, but I'm still going to tell it. You moan, but you'll be you'll be telling the same joke tomorrow. Hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. Then the lens is going to be traced by two wide styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape. And then the old carpenter saying, measure twice, cut once, is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point on the circumference to know exactly where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. I could move the bevel forwards or backwards. I know that looks opposite to you, but if the if I move the bevel backwards on the lens, it would force the lens forward, which I would never want to do. Or if I move the bevel forwards, it would move the lens back into the frame, but the computer's going to do all of that for me. That's what $40,000 buys you. Now the light you see flickering in the background is water to catch the optical sawdust as the lens comes off the cutting wheel, which is spinning very fast. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now, water will spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds, but plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the total time it is on that cutting wheel. But as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lenses. The same lens materials that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. Speaking of protection, these have 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now, as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. These are the Essilor brand of lenses. Essilor refers to polycarbonate as airwear because they feel they're as light as air. And of course, these are the Crizal Sapphire 360 lenses. 
both packets. Now it's double check. If you notice your lens is completely flat, just like a, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter on its own. It's double checking its own check and balance system again to see exactly where to place the bevel for the best cosmetic look possible. So now it's dropping down onto the bevel wheel and getting the knife-like bevel placed on there, a dull knife like myself, but a knife-like edge nonetheless. In fact, your lens is going to be so sharp that if you were to take the lens out of the frame, you could cut through a piece of wet tissue, providing that you soak the tissue in a bucket of water overnight and using all your strength, you might be able to cut through that tissue. So water has begun spraying on the lens. It tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of this cycle. Let's wash away any optical debris, optical sawdust, also that goes by the name Schwarf. At first I didn't believe that word and I raised my hand in school back in college almost called BS that there was no word. They made me open my textbook in front of all my classmates and find it, proving that I hadn't read my textbooks. Don't worry, I passed the state board on my first try. Got a higher score than any other of my classmates. A lot of them didn't work full-time like I did. Going to school full-time and working full-time is two full-time jobs. A lot of people worked part-time or had no job. We're straight-A students. I was in the half of my class that made the top half possible. <laughs> but none of them passed on the first try like I did. I also have the, the highest, the hardest test. There's eight parts to the state board exam. The hardest test is the theory, and I scored a 96, the highest in the entire record of anyone taking the state board exam in North Carolina. I have the highest score. All my classmates failed it. So, those straight A students, ha! So, now I'm going to do Lefty Lucy. So, Justin, if you ever need new lenses for this frame, you need a tiny jeweler screwdriver with a Phillips head screw. Phillips head tip and I'm going to do a little bit of lefty loosey trying to avoid taking the screw out all the way like that I'm going to tuck it back in now what I would tell you if you ever need new lenses if I mail you new lenses get a, a large baking pan glass baking pan or metal pan put a t-shirt in there so that should the screw ever come out and bounce onto something it won't hit this table and go onto the floor it'll land in there and be cushioned so I'm going to turn the frame around and actually still while the screw head is up, I don't want to do it where it's down. I'm going to tuck your unbreakable lens in at the outside corner, push in with my thumbs. Ah, I went through the back. All right, so it is going to have to come out all the way. I'm going to just going to make sure that is seated perfectly. And it's still not, whoops, see, that's why you put that there. That's why you put that there. Let's get the lens mounted in there perfectly. Is that in there perfectly? Is that in there perfectly? Well, I have to take it down some more, put the screw in there. Little tiny screws with fat fingers. Now we're going to do a little bit of righty tighty. Place your frame against this little rubber thing. And if you have something at home, I do that to protect the finish of the frame as I press down. Before tightening all the way, I just want to make sure that that is mounted in there perfectly. That the bevel is inside the bevel of the frame. I'm going to now go ahead and continue to tighten that down. To make sure that screw is in there all the way and we are perfect so let's go ahead and cut the left lens which actually has a little bit more power so I'm gonna flip that over to L and I'm gonna take that down 1 20th of a millimeter just so that is seated in there better press that on there firmly attach the magnet to another magnet there in the Chuck the Charles the Chucky baby oh Chuckster Chuckster all right that's enough no singing I'm not gonna quit my day job or my night job because it's dark right now it is 621 on Tuesday February 5th look 70 degrees in my hometown early February God I gotta love North Carolina of course it's still gonna be under 40 degrees this weekend but enjoy today while it lasts that's true no matter what the weather is everyone out there listening enjoy today tomorrow is promised to no one everyone gets all stressed about their living conditions their work conditions I remind everyone, Mondays don't suck, you just have the wrong job. If you hate going in on Monday, you need to find another job that you are passionate about, something that you love doing and then it's never work. Something you can joke around out now. I do joke around in my videos because I am professional. If you have no clue what you are doing, you have to act very serious. <laughs> because you know what you're doing, 
you can be a fool at times. So I'm going to take this block off, pull the sticker off, use my hand approved drying method, throw that back in there, place that sticker on top of my collection. Ooh, that's a big fat PD or optical center. Turn that back to 111. Put the lens in over that black dot. And when I read the power, I am getting minus two and a quarter. One tick mark going away from two towards three. That's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R, starting at zero and going up in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and so on. You're on the ninth rung of a ladder. You are far-sighted. You need nine steps. I'm sorry, you're nearsighted. You're nearsighted. You need nine steps of far-sighted correction. That's why there is a minus sign. With your lenses off, everything is much too large. So your lenses minify, which is the opposite of magnify. Your lenses minify down to the correct size. In fact, you don't believe me? Look, now those lenses, everything on that card looks smaller. Those numbers. So your lenses minify down to the correct image size. Once the image is the correct size, you have another eight steps. So nine and eight, you have 17 total steps of power. You have, now, uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike of the letters P and F. So once everything is the correct size, we have to make it nice and crisp. So let's check another eight steps. And we end up at minus four and a quarter. Remember high school algebra? Yeah, no one does. Let's use today's terms. If someone borrowed $2.25 from you, then they borrowed another $2, they would owe you $4.25. As we're at 425 in the red, one tick mark past four going towards five. Now, astigmatism is the fine tune knob. If you can think of a knob, we're gonna turn that fine tune knob from zero to 90 to 180. We're gonna turn just past the, the 90th meridian to about 111. Now, your left eye needs 11 steps of far-sighted correction, but only six steps of astigmatism correction. So we're gonna end up, hang on, three and fifty you're gonna be four and a quarter also how about that so you can end up with the same total power we're just going to get there differently we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 45. so these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with this last number could be anywhere from zero to 180 it just tells us where to set that fine tune knob to make everything nice and crisp now normally this frame sells for about three i can't remember how much it sells for but you didn't buy the frame for me so that's why i got to charge you 49.99 for your lenses the Crizal Sapphire 360 is $139.99 for a total of $189.98. Now again, this is one of Oakley's most expensive frames. But if you buy from me, your lenses are free and you only pay any upgrade to anti-glare or transitions or any of that stuff that you want. So, where was I at? Oh yeah, the left lens. Let's take that out. We're going to dry everything off. Put that in there so the screw doesn't jump around. Run my thumbnail around to get the optical sawdust, the schwarf, off of your lenses. Grab my Phillips head screwdriver, do a little bit of lefty loosey. That's going to come out all the way. Hold the, oh, the optical sawdust. Hold that over the tray. Usually I don't use trays in my videos, but on metal frames with screws, I'm going to do it because you don't pay me enough to crawl around on the floor with this camera on my head. That's embarrassing, so I'm not going to let anyone see me do it. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Make sure that is seated in there. Let me loosen that a little bit and double check. I know it's corny, but that little extra, that's the difference between ordinary and extraordinary, is that little extra in the beginning to make sure everything goes perfectly. Now, if this were my frame, I'd go and find another screw. This is his frame, so I'm going to return everything back in the condition that it was mailed to me in. Dry that off, throw that in there, add that. Let's see where to put this one. Let's have fun. That one is pulling up a little bit. Let's, let's stick that one back down on there. Make everything nice and even. Squish this on there tiny. First 11 months, and then since I moved to my lab, we got that. First 11 months with this edger, the newer one, and then last six months with that one. So, turn the fine tune knob to 45. Put it in above that black dot. Check the power. I'm getting minus 275, one tick mark away from three. You have another six steps of astigmatism correction. And what did I say we end up at? Four and a quarter. Man, the kid is good. 
I couldn't have done a better job cutting these lenses if I had done it myself. So your PD is 31 for your right eye, 31 for your left for a total of 930. Wait, I mathed wrong. 62. 62. So I'm going to turn that around. Place the PD stick against my thumb. When I hold it up to your left lens, we're getting 62 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. So this is the portion of every video that... Hang on. Clean up. Clean up as I go. Clean up on aisle 5. This is the portion of every video that as I clean your lenses, I mention that when you get these in the mail, and of course free shipping anywhere in the U.S., but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first. Also known as a three-point stance. The so three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And of course, when I say wobble, normally I would take my glasses off and press down. They would wobble. But... These Oakley Pilot Temples, these are known as Pilot Temples where they go straight back. If you can imagine a pilot, an airplane pilot, old fighter jet wearing a helmet, you could slide these on and off without having to take your, your helmet off. So these are great for anyone who rides a motorcycle or wears a hard helmet, construction or otherwise. For those of you keeping score at home, I'm wearing the Oakley 8132 Cross Range Switch in color 05, the Universe Blue, which comes with the uh, orange temples. You could switch these out if you wanted. You pull down that little lever, that comes out, and you can put another color temple on there. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo! Flip that over, press down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and that they do, that neither temple is askew like that. So that's it. So, just in. I send out a selfie request in every package to have your... I would love to have your selfie on the website. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only for your frame and lenses, so they will last you for years, but for your Oakley cleaning cloth carrying bag, for the Crizal cleaning cloth that you're going to get, and the premium microfiber cloth that I provide, as well as how to clean your case. And no other seller on the internet does that, I am told. So, just give these a final cleaning. I also field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that they work. So when you get this in the mail and you see the wrinkles, you know that it works. You can't say that it doesn't. So Justin in St. Louis, Missouri. Ooh, hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. If you've liked what you've seen or you don't like what you've seen and you love torture, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as FreePrescriptionLenses.com. On Twitter as FreeRxLenses because I can't have a long username on Twitter. You can email me on the contact me page on this website or email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or better yet, I tell everyone to leave a question or comment in the comment section below. That includes you, Justin. Leave a comment when before you get these, after you get these. Just let people know what you think. And Justin in... Where's my flashlight? I've got a smaller flashlight. I just can't find it. Justin in St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you for... The purchase of lenses only for your Oakley 5079 carbon plates. This is the 53 eye size. It also comes in a 55 eye size should anyone want to buy from me. And of course, thanks again for the purchase of these lenses with Crizal Sapphire that you will be receiving everything, the original packets and everything. And everyone else has now got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.